I'm Patrick Nordwall. I'm tech lead for the Akka team at Lightband. Akka 2.6 is brand new and it comes with new APIs for doing event sourcing. If you already know Akka, this is the new APIs for Akka Persistence. Event sourcing is based on that each change is represented by an event. Those events are appended to a log, and the current state can be constructed by replaying these events. I will not explain the benefits of event sourcing here, but you can learn more about that in the Lightpen Reactive Architecture course. So we are going to look at the event sourcing APIs in Akka 2.6. And the code I will show is based on an example product that you can download. It's available both for Scala and Java. I'll start by running this shopping cart example so you see where we are going before we dive into the code. First we start Cassandra in one terminal. Then we start one Akka cluster node. And then we will interact with this application using a few HTTP curl calls. So first we create a shopping cart and add a few Akka t-shirts to it. We can also retrieve the current shopping cart. Let's start another Akka cluster node. And we can even retrieve the same cart by accessing the other node instead. Yeah, as expected. We will look at how to implement this shopping cart using event sourcing in Akka. In the end, it will be an actor defined as a behavior. We're using the event source behavior, and for that we need three types. The command, which represents the incoming messages, the events, which will be stored, and the state, which represents the current state of the actor. So we define the message type. This is the add item command. It has the item identifier and the number of items to add to the shopping cart. It also has an actor f to which a confirmation message will be sent when the item has been added to the shopping cart. Let's handle this message in the command handler. Delegating it to a method. We pattern match on the incoming command and for add item we want to persist the corresponding event. We do that by returning a persist effect. So we need this item added event. We haven't taken care of the reply yet, but let's implement the event handler first. So when the event has been persisted, we want to update the state based on the event. That's what we do in the event handler. Delegating that to a method as well. Pattern matching on the event and updating the state. Adding this update item method to the state. The state consists of a map of the items. Updating the map of items in the state. Here's a case class so return a new instance of the state but it would also be fine to have mutable state. So that's the event handler. Let's go back to the command handler. So we wanted to send a reply back as confirmation that the item has been successfully added. We can do that by chaining the persist effect with a then run. In this case, we send a message back to the reply to actorf. We can make the command handler somewhat more interesting by adding validation before persisting the event. For example, the quantity must be more than zero, otherwise we want to send back a rejected message and not persist anything. So 
So we change the reply to be either accepted or rejected. Then we add the validation logic and reply with rejected in case the quantity is invalid. Also note that we return effect none here because we don't want to persist anything. One important aspect of this is that the event handler is also used for recovering the state when the actor is started again. Then it's replaying the stored events and updating the state to the same as it was before. Alright, that's all needed for implementing the add item. The real shopping cart will have more commands, but they will follow the same pattern. To run this in the Naka cluster, we want to use cluster sharding. Sharding will take care of the life cycle of the shopping carts. For a given shopping cart ID, it will make sure that there is only one instance of that cart in the cluster. It will route messages from different nodes in the cluster to the specific shopping cart. To enable cluster sharding, we need to initialize the shopping cart entity. This is like a factory for new shopping cart instances. The init is performed once when the system is started. Let's take a look at how messages can be sent to the shopping cart instances. In the HTTP API, it looks like this to add an item to the shopping cart. For a given cart ID, we can look up a so-called entity ref from cluster sharding. Here we use ask to send the add item message to the cart. When the reply message comes back, we can return to the HTTP request. So this works great for updates and requests that only involve one cart ID. This doesn't work well for other queries that don't involve a specific cart ID. For example, relational queries, if people bought the Akka t-shirt, what other things did they also buy? In the database we store the events, and we can't efficiently make queries like that directly on the events, so we need another representation, and that is what my next video will be about. How to consume events from many shopping carts and build up another representation that could serve such queries, or publish the events to other systems. You can download the full sample code for the shopping cart in the link shown here. It's available both for Java and Scala. To learn more about event sourcing, reactive systems and many other things, you can go to Lightman Academy. In the ACA documentation you find much more information about ACA persistence. I can also recommend the other videos and webinars that are available from lightman.com. Thanks for listening.